this is question six from paper two of the 2020 Ordinary Level Leave and Serve Maths exam. Up the top right, you'll find a playlist that has all my solutions to the questions in this paper. And below the video, you'll find a link to an image of this question. So you can try it before looking at this solution. Part one of this question gives us this image with these numbers here. Now I have to say before I start, this is a very simple question that I would like to see all students get full marks in. But they don't. They don't get very. Uh, they don't do very well in this question. I'd say it's about average, if below average, uh, results sort of question. Lots of things throw students off, and um, that you can't. What you can't see here, which you can probably see if you call the question up, is there's lots of numbers up the top with lots of letters. That's just telling you what each of these numbers are. For example, this one here, it would have something along the lines of E C B. Here's uh, E. And this is C and B. So the angle ECB equals 60. All that letters and numbers seems to confuse people. You don't really need it all. Um, what I have on the, on the board here is enough to do the question. And then how we do the question as well, which I'll get into now. Should, students should find easier. Um, and they don't seem to. Let's, let's go through why I think it's easy. You have two things you don't know. You have an X and a Y. What we're looking for is two pieces of information, two equations to write from this, uh, from this um, problem. Oh, the other thing students find difficult is, um, this says 60. So, okay, that angle is 60. This one here says x plus y. That is just a number we don't know yet. That's all. Maybe x is, is 20, maybe y is 30. So this is 50. That's all. It's just a number we don't know, know yet. Um, x plus y is just an unknown number. Okay, we're looking for two pieces of information. One that I can see is a triangle. This is a triangle. So I can quite simply write this equation now. I can write 80 plus x plus y. Let's put a bracket around that, because in case there was a minus, that can be different. Um, plus 3x plus y. And again, I'll put a bracket around that. It, it's not important here, but sometimes it is if there was minuses. These three angles, they have to add up to 180. We've learned that for many years. Three angles of a triangle add up to 180. Here's one equation with two things we don't know, x and y. Cannot solve it. We need another equation. So again, I look, there's other options, but the most easy one, I think, would be this angle and this angle. They equal each other. We've learned that over the years. Um, 3x plus y equals 60. We've learned that angles like this that are across from each other with two lines are equal to each other. This, uh, this is equal to this, and this angle is equal to this angle. So I can write this. Again, it's an equation with two unknowns, x and y. I can't do it on its own, but put them together and we have a simultaneous equation. Now students are very happy to do simultaneous equations when they look nice and simple, let's say 3a plus b equals 5, 4a minus b equals 7. When they look like this, students find them quite easy and they're able to do them. This is no different. We have two unknowns, a and b here, x and y here. You just need to make it look a little more like this. The second line is already fine, 3x plus y, unknown, unknown equals a number. The top line though, let's play around with this. Right, let's add all these x's together. We have x here plus another 3x. I can write 4x. We have a y plus another y. I can write 2y. And then we have um, 180 here and an 80 here. If we move this across, it becomes a minus. So we get 180 minus 80. Uh, so that's equal to 100. And now we have what I hope most students will be able to solve easily, a, a simple simultaneous equation. Uh, there's multiple ways to do it, but uh, probably the most common would be to take the top line and multiply it by 2. Let's multiply that by 2. We'd get 6x plus y plus 2y now equals 60 is 120. And now we can take them away from each other. Um, that, that's to destroy these two numbers here. So 4x minus 6x, that'll leave a minus. So let's do it the other way around. Let's take 6x minus 4x. 
just to leave a positive number. 6x, take away 4x is 2x. It would work the other way, by the way. It would just, you'd be left with two minuses. 2y minus 2y is nothing, so I don't have to leave it. Put something there. Equals says here. 120 take away 100. Again, once we did 6x minus 4, so we better do them all the same way. This number minus this number. 120 minus 100 is 20. That means x must equal 10. Students that do get this far, they then forget something very simple. What's y? I need to write down what y is. So I pick any of these equations. I'd pick probably this one here. And I'd write 3x plus y equals 60. Instead of x though, I know what x is. It's, it's 10. So instead of 3x, I'd write 3 times 10, which is 30. Um, let's take 30 away from both sides. We get y is equal to 60 minus 30, which is uh, 30 as well. So that's what we get there. x is 10, y is 30. We can check that. 3x is 3 times 10 is 30, plus another 30 is 60. And yes, 60 does equal 60. And we can add all these up. We'd get... Uh, Let's see, we get 40 here, and um, we get 60 here. 40 plus 60 plus 80 is 180. So yes, these numbers do seem to work. All right, that's part A. This is quite a simple question that students just seem to panic at because there's letters instead of numbers. Hopefully, hopefully you've learned a little there. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments. Um, but otherwise, I'll rub this out and we'll do part B. Okay, in part B, they give us this new shape here, and they basically ask us to find x. There's a little more written, but that's really what they're asking us to do here. Now, I want to point out in this question, this comes up probably every year, a question that looks like this, where we have a triangle, and then we have a line that's parallel to one of the other lines. It's a very common question, comes up, just looks a little different each year, but it'll come up pretty much the same question so get used to it it's a guaranteed question maybe not fully guaranteed but it'll probably come up so it's an easy way to get marks and here's how you do it the same if you notice that these triangles the big one and this little one here they're what we call similar triangles let me draw them out again here's the small one here's the big one we call them similar because they have the same angles think of this angle here which is here this angle here, which is also here, they're, they're equal to each other. I hope you'll agree. That one is the same as that. They're in the same spot. Now, a harder one is this angle and this angle. They're equal to each other as well because these are parallel lines. So that they are the same as each other. And again, this angle and this angle are the same because, again, these are parallel lines. That means all the angles of this are the same as this. That's a similar triangle. They just look the same, just zoomed in, zoomed out. It's just enlarged is another way to think of that. That means if, um, if this side, this length here is twice as big as this, this length will be twice as big. This length will be twice as big. And we're gonna use that information. Let's put in as many numbers as we can. We put five here, 12 here. Here's a, oh, well, of course we put 30 on this side. Here's a little trick. What is this length? A lot of students don't realize how to do it. It's just x plus five. That's how long this is, x plus five. That, this is one of the great uses of algebra, being able to do things like that. Where that's one number now. x plus five is just one number. Uh, right, so sim, uh, similar triangles. We can actually see how much bigger this is than this. We multiply this by two, we get 24. We need to multiply by, it looks like 2.5. This is 2.5 bigger. Well then that means this is 2.5 bigger. That's actually one way to do it. We can say five multiplied by 2.5 is equal to x plus five. That's one way to do it. I'm not gonna do it that way because it's not the commonest way to, it's probably the easiest, but it's not the most common way to do it. The rule we tend to teach students but it's just the same as what I said though, is this, any side, let's pick 30, divided by its corresponding side, let's pick, well, 12 is its corresponding one, the two bottoms, shall we say, they'll be equal to any other side, there's no point picking this and this, there's no information about it, so we'll pick this side, 
divided by its corresponding one, 5. And really all that's telling us is how much bigger is one than the other? How much bigger is one than the other? And they should be the same. So if this is two and a half times bigger, this is two and a half times bigger. That's what this is pretty much telling us. Uh, but really what now what we have is an equation. One equation with one thing we don't know. That's something we can solve. Let's start get rid of these fractions. I hate fractions. Five, let's get rid of it. Let's multiply both sides by five. We'll multiply the, the left and that'll destroy it. But then we better multiply the right. Uh, Sorry, we multiply the right, we better multiply the left. Same with the 12, we'll destroy it <coughs> by multiplying a 12 over there, but I better multiply this side by a 12, and that will destroy that one. So what are we left with? Five times 30 is 150. 12 times x, 12x. 12, 12 times five is 60. Let's rearrange this. So we uh, take the 60 over, take it away. 150 minus 60 is 90 is equal to 12x and that means x must equal 90 divided by 12. I'm taking the 12 over. I'm also switching them around just to save a bit of trouble. Um, how many times does 90, uh, 12 go into 90? Um, I guess I can do it in my head, I hope. 5 times is 60, another half of that, so 7.5. That's how long um, x is, 7.5. All right, I think that answers all of those questions. If you have any follow-up questions, anything I did wrong, anything like that, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. And until next time, have a great day.